Hello and welcome to class number 58 of the UPSC Mains Answering Initiative. I hope all of you are doing good and all of you are eagerly waiting for your prelims result. Some of you might be watching this after the prelim result is out but I really hope that you are regular here either way. As you know in this series every evening we have a class where we take up a practice question, a model question from the topics that are in the news, try to study that topic, answer that question and in the end give you a homework also to write that answer. As you know, since the last class we have changed our model, earlier we were discussing previous year questions asked by the UPSC already, but now we are taking up model questions or practice questions that may be asked this year as well. In order to help you further in your answer writing initiative, I have launched the Mastering UPSC Mains Answer Writing Program where I will be mentoring you individually one on one to practice Mains Answer Writing to make sure that you are on top of your game and you are able to answer any question that the UPSC throws at you. Again, it's a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, it's not a group program, so you will be interacting directly with me and I'll be talking to you directly. If you want any other details about the program, these are the contact details mentioned here. Feel free to call WhatsApp or email as and when you like. Now let's see what question I'll be taking up today. But before that, as I do in every single class, a reminder, if you are new here, if this is a very first class and you have no idea how to begin answer writing, do a couple of things. First, hit the subscribe button, obviously. And second, if you're new here, you don't know how to begin, I would advise you, go to the description of this video. In the description, you'll find the link of the playlist of this series, the UPSC Means Answer Writing Initiative. In that playlist, go to the first class, class number one. In the first class, I have discussed about the introduction, how and what to write in the intro, the main body and the concluding argument. So first, clarify that with the first class so that you are clear what to write, what are the things that should be written, what are the things that should not be written, so that that's clear to you. And then you can come back to visit this. Let's see what question I'll be taking up today. Today we are taking up a question from a topic in GS3. The question is based on India's livestock mission. So the question is, analyze the diverse economic impacts of India's livestock sector within the nation's socio-economic context. Additionally, highlight the government initiatives aimed at supporting India's livestock sector. Now, a couple of things here. First, the government missions, be it in the livestock sector, fishery, dairy, etc. All of these are extremely important. So you should know data about these. Data as in, let's say their contribution to our GDP. Um, how many or how much or how big is the sector last year? How many tax or how much tax did it contribute? So on and so forth. Any data that you can get, on, get your hands on about these missions. All of that is extremely important for you for the mains examination. Second, I told this earlier also, please do remember UPSC has a habit of asking more than one things in every question. There will hardly be any question by the UPSC where they will ask only one thing. They will ask at least two or even three things in some cases. Here also see they are asking two things. First, they are asking the economic impact of India's livestock sector. And second, they are asking about the government initiative. So when you are writing the answer, do not miss out on any of the parts. If the question is asking three parts, you have to mention all the three. If the question is asking two parts, you have to mention all the two. Otherwise, there will be a large reduction in your answer marks. Now, when you say livestock sector, what do you mean? You mean the dairy sector, the poultry sector, all these are included and that becomes a livestock sector. So we will start with the intro. Now, I have told this multiple times earlier. Intro has to be a fact or a definition. So either you can define India's livestock sector, but there is no definition to be given as such. Because nothing really is uh, technical. If you want, you can give definition of livestock. But again, that is also a very common term. So I would not suggest you to write definition of a very commonly used word. Rather, it's important to go ahead with the fact. So what we have done is we have started with the fact India's livestock sector contributes approximately 4.11% to our national GDP and 25.6% to the agricultural GDP. Now, again, if you don't remember these numbers or these facts, these data, then I would not suggest you to make a guess. Only write these numbers, especially in the introduction when you're sure about this. Now you might be sure, you might be sure about 4%, you might not be having exact data of 4.11%, then you can say approximately 4%, that will also work. You don't have to be exact to the, correct to the entire digit. If you are, that is well and good, but if you are not, that is also fine. Use the word approximately or around, that will also do. Main body, again, we'll have tried two, five, uh, two parts. First, 
their economic contribution and second the government initiatives so in economic contribution again we have to give a lot of facts data so we'll first start with dairy industry india is the world's largest milk producer contributes 20 percent of the global production it the sector employs more than 70 million rural households including small and minor farmers we can give examples of white revolution national dairy development board etc Second part is about the poultry and meat production, where again India is one of the largest players in the entire world. This sector is going at a rate of 6 to 8 percent per annum in states such as UP, West Bengal specifically. It has become a major pro uh, provider of employment. We can also write about the other socioeconomic benefits. For example, it has led to women empowerment. A lot of women are involved in livestock rearing, they take an active part, they play an active role in maintaining of livestock. So this is the first part, the economic contribution. Second part has to be about the government initiatives. How many do you write depends entirely upon you. You can write two, three, four, more than one obviously. It is initiatives and not initiative. So more than one obviously, but how many do you have to write? It depends on the word limit and depends on how many do you remember at that point of time. So you can first start with the national livestock mission. You can write about Rashti Gogul program, Rashti Gogul mission rather, dairy entrepreneurship development scheme. Whichever do you remember at that point of time in that pressure situation, try and write those, try and quote those. Don't uh, uh, do it or don't overtly go into a lot of examples, a lot of initiatives. Don't write six, seven, eight. Three or four is more than enough and that should be good enough to round up the answer. Then we can conclude about writing about the importance of the livestock sector, how it is the cornerstone of our rural economy and offers multiple social and economic benefits and the government initiatives help in improving its productivity, sustainability, etc. Something like this can be the concluding argument. Now, livestock, livestock mission is an important topic. It can be asked time and time again. So please do remember data about this. If you don't have time to search for this, I give you data in this answer. So please make a note of that. And for your practice, this is your practice question. Examine the dependency ratio in the context of India's aging population. Highlight the primary challenges encountered by the elderly in India and propose practical measures to elevate their issues. It's a question from GS on Indian society, mostly based on demographic dividend on India's aging population and the pressure that it has on others who are paying taxes on whose shoulder the government is running. If you want, I'll be happy to evaluate. You can send these answers across to me. I'll take a few days to write back, but I do write back. Don't worry. Thank you so much for joining in. Once again, do consider joining the program. You can subscribe to the channel and join my Telegram channel as well. The link is in the description of the video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Jai.